I'm having some. I'm having lemonade. This is lemonade. Have, have I shown you these these cool glasses I got before? Yeah, that's yeah. badass. Yeah, kind of puts my uh, puts my Budweiser to shame. <laughs> For those of you in the podcast world, it's a glass that looks like a skull, and that's, nice. I drink everything out of it now. Anyway, I'm on I'm on clear liquids today because okay. tomorrow I'm having a colonoscopy. Cool. Um, so um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not even kidding. That's uh, that it's uh, I mean, I'm 46. I was supposed to do it last year. And um, so today I'm having they, I, I can't actually eat anything like I had chicken broth for lunch. And so I is that have... like an Italian dish or something like colonoscopy? Do you not know what a colonoscopy is? I know what a colonoscopy <laughs> is. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> um, and I can have, you know, uh, uh, orange or yellow jello. Oh. Um, and, and of course, Congratulations. like 7-Up, like <laughs> Sprite, and water. So my wife made me some lemonade because she's a sweetheart. Mm. Um, but, yeah, tomorrow morning I go and um they put me to sleep and they put something up my butt while i'm sleeping that seems rude <laughs> like yeah. why, why, can, why can't i be awake for that like why do i why do i have to be asleep are you gonna like make fun of my butthole while, while i'm under <laughs> <laughs> why is it you can do it and it's fine and when i do it i get arrested <laughs> <laughs> so uh but it, it'll be interesting because i've never actually had that kind of anesthesia before like i've had like regular like numbing anesthesia but the mm. the sleepy time anesthesia never had that before wow so, okay. So I'm 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 interested to like because the weird it'll be weird for me because some people will say oh it's like you know you fall asleep and then you know you have those days that when you wake up and you're like really groggy and I'm like I don't ever wake up like that that is not how I sleep I literally go from I'm asleep I'm awake there's there's I can't think of any time in my life where you know some people get are so groggy that they don't really know that they're talking to you like my daughter yeah. does that. That's not me. Wow. I literally wake up immediately. And I think that's I I, mean, I, I know I've Yeah, I have never been that way. I just immediately wake up. I can have a conversation with you immediately. So it so there's also that part of it where I go, I don't I don't I'm not ever groggy like that or you know, quote unquote. So uh so we may so I'm going to tell my wife like you know maybe film me cuz maybe it'll be a is this real life kind of video with me, you know <laughs> you never know what I'm going to say um anyway so uh you know uh RIP my butthole tomorrow so hey happens to the best of us yeah <laughs> hey one you'll get there one day oh yeah you're going to be mid 40s and you got to get that shit checked out mhm anyway hi <laughs> <laughs> Um, welcome to demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Cranked and Ranked, a uh, podcast slash YouTube show where we rank band discographies and artist discographies, like in this particular case. And no, I didn't choose uh, to talk about a uh, colonoscopy because we're doing Ted Nugent today. I, that was that's a coincidence. <laughs> my dog, my dogs are, are going crazy. <laughs> anyway, talk shit about Ted Nugent get hit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so this is it, it's it's weird because uh, um, I would have easily lived my life and died and never done a Ted Nugent ranking, and I would have been fine with it. Sorry, that's that's Sonny. He's he's the new boy. He's uh, he gets Big very Nugent fan. He, he gets really rambunctious. Anyway, um, but then we decided it would be interesting to you know that's probably the reason why doing a Ted Nugent ranking because I'm famously not a fan of Ted Nugent as a human or a uh, musician. Um, I mean, he's a fine he's a good guitar player. He's a fine guitar player, you know, um, but. Uh, not my thing. I'm not into it. So even even more of a reason to do a, a Ted Nugent ranking. And so here we are. And um, he has a lot of albums. Mm -hmm. So much so that we that we we kind of trimmed it down. And when I say trimmed it down, there's still 14 albums that we're talking about. Um, but uh, it's a lot. 
I, I apologize for Sonny. He's 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 very loud. Um, he's pissed that you took off two albums, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Don't, um, three, I think. Anyway, it d- doesn't matter. But um, so yeah, so we're gonna be going through Ted Nugent. So I got to experience the Ted Nugent discography, and um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I I don't know. I, I I feel like I have a sort of a better understanding of of why people love Ted Nugent, maybe. Um, but as we normally do, we, we, uh, we start off by talking about where the artist came into our lives. Now, funny enough, like I don't remember hearing Ted Nugent when I was a kid, probably because the only song I think I would have heard is probably Stranglehold and he doesn't sing that. So, um, Cat Scratch Fever, maybe, maybe, but I didn't know. Ted Nugent, the, Ted Nugent came into my life with Damn Yankees. Like once I uh, saw in 19, was it 1990? I saw the video for High Enough, which High Enough, as much as I don't like Ted Nugent, High Enough is to me is one of the best power ballads ever in the history of power ballads. Yeah. So that was my was introduction. That to, yeah, that was my introduction to to Ted Nugent. And then through the years, I heard random Ted Nugent. But I, um, I, I my, my biggest connection with him was I loved that VH1 show Super Group. Where he was started a group with Scott Ian, Evan yep. Seinfeld, Sebastian Bach, and uh, Savage uh, Animal. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it? What is it? What is it? Uh, uh, John Bonham's son, Jason Bonham. Jason Bonham yeah. was in that too. That was a great series. But you know, little by little, um, Ted Nugent annoyed me, and so I've I've never been a fan. And but but here we are, and we're, we'll, we will. Uh, um, I will. I promise, this is my promise to all of you. I will, I promise, don't smile because I because you I because I'm being truthful here. The uh I will be giving the Ted Nugent discography the respect it deserves today, just so you all know. Um so where did Ted Nugent come into your life? Uh well, you know, I first heard of Ted Nugent, you know, when I was a I was a young metalhead you know learning about shit and i just remember ah th- there's a there's a joke in this green jello song where it's like name his daddy was a rock star named pig nugent i was like nugent? No. who's who's pig nugent supposed to be because i'd never heard of ted yeah uh, so i looked up ah, ted nugent but then i just i never like went past that yeah and then a couple and then about a year or so later i managed to finally track down uh gta vice city stories which is the vice city game that kind of escaped me up until i was about 16. uh and that was another moment where i was like dude this is just vice city but again set two years prior anyway stranglehold is on the rock station got it yeah soundtrack and i was just like it's kind of a banger kind of got some groove to it yeah uh and then i heard cat scratch fever and i thought this is pretty cool uh and then i found out he it, he is kind of nutso mode <laughs> uh, uh and that that yeah i remember finding that out about the from the simpsons episode he did you know credit to him he's, he's got a sense of humor sometimes yeah um but, i think but as he's yeah. getting i think as he's gotten older that sense of humor is kind of diminished but you know whatever <laughs> But yeah, we are we are here today to um, finally bring the Ted Nugent Cranked and Ranked episode. Yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, thank you for being here as usual. Um, so yeah, like I said, we we narrowed it down to fourteen albums, and this was basically just a discussion about um, which ones. I don't know. I, we I don't know how we came up with this list. We had this discussion where we were we, talking. I, th- I think we went back and forth as to whether or not we were going to include live albums and we we ultimately decided not not to just just do the uh just do the um studio works right or or, or albums that are some kind of compilation or, or yeah something yeah like that. so so it's just the it's just the main main studio discography well you know what let's let's this i feel like this is a long time coming so um we should just jump into it right now 
Cool. Um, so <laughs> 14, 14. So we're starting with number 14, the number 14 Ted Nugent album. As usual, I'm going to throw it over to Eddie Sparks to start us off. Get hydrated, everybody. Here we go. Okay. Number 14, Ted Nugent album, and go. My number 14 Ted Nugent album is Air Bud Spikes Back. Um, so okay, okay, all right, all right. First of all, what the hell happened here? This was the final of the five Air Bud films, uh, and its underwhelming quality inspired the franchise to reboot into Air Buddies. Um, yeah. Pairing Buddy was a, with a talking parrot was, you know, obviously... An inspired choice but we all know that andrea couldn't carry the film as well with josh gone entirely you know of course when talking about this movie as a disappointment it's important to keep in mind that it is all relative like even the worst airbud still makes citizen kane look like a festering turd yeah so, well yeah. i mean the, 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 the you have to remember that at this point because that guy the main the main kid was in like four airbuds and yeah. then eventually, I mean, he tried to move on and have a career outside of this. And and at this point, you know, Buddy can play volleyball. So it's yeah. like, how much, how many more sports can you can you enter into this? Because he is literally like, you know, like back in the '90s, you had like people like like uh, like you know Bo Jackson and people like that. They were just like, we're going to play all kinds of sports. Yeah, and. Uh, and Buddy is the dog version of uh, Bo Jackson. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's you know it, it is one of those things where it, it may not be a great you know movie, but in concept, volleyball is an ideal sport for a dog. Dogs it, run it's fast. Way, yeah, and, you know, they're great at switching directions. They love hitting balls in the air. Um, I can definitely see a dog being excellent at sprinting across a court to I'm, dig shots before they touch the ground. You know, every part of playing Airbud is entirely plausible. And it, and 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 dogs in general love balls. So yeah. you would that's why all all of the movies are ball ball sports. Like he doesn't yeah. he doesn't do like curling. <laughs> yeah. Been, yeah. I don't know why curling is the one I thought of. <laughs> um, I guess he could. He could. He could hit it with his nose, and the other people. You have the other teammates. Absolutely doing the, doing the whatever you call. I don't even understand curling, so never mind. Yeah. Um, I do find it weird that you put one, an OG the, at the bottom because it it, it really was a, a a hard choice, man. But but they, you know, <laughs> pardon the pun, fumbled here, and I and I really think they needed to breathe some new mm. life into the franchise. I think I think yeah. by the time. The fifth movie arrived. It was time for you know Airbud to retire and have some kids, and that's what they did. So yeah, um, okay. yeah my my number fourteen Airbud spikes back. Cool. All right. Well, I I I, I get kind of a different take on okay. on the whole Ted Nugent discography, just because I I felt that T Ted Nugent originally started off with um a, a kind of a good concept for the, for the kind of music he was doing mm -hmm. and then that kind of got ran into the ground and then he, he, it sort of became a different kind of ted nugent thing um and i and i do think at one point it just got very diluted and that's kind of where i'm going here my number 14 is santa paws 2 the santa pups from 2012. So at, the, at this point, this is a sequel of a spinoff of a spinoff. So mm -hmm. it's literally watering down the whole franchise. To, and, and to be fair, when it, I gonna, I'm going to go on record and say that I would like there to be like a rule every Christmas there can only be one new Santa related kids movie that comes out. There should be an agreement because there's just too much, too much Santa Claus all over the fucking place. And when I was a kid, I didn't give two shits about Santa Claus. I wanted presents. 
I don't know what the Santa thing is like adults having fun fucking with kids. And I'm not I'm not about that. But so Santa Plus 2, um, it's more Christmas. And um, and not only that, there are two different years where there's two buddies movies that come out at the same time. So the, mm. the, in 2012, not only did you have Treasure Buddies, but you also had Santa Paws 2. And I, th- I feel like they put so much time and effort into the actual Buddies movie that Santa Paws 2, it just feels like they're running out of ideas. And yeah. the formula of the cute talking dogs getting into this mischief, it doesn't matter if they're working with Santa or whatever the fuck it is. It just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. And I feel like... Um, that's kind of the, the, the low point of the, of the series. So that's my, that's my number 14 moving on because you were number 13. Cool. So, uh, my number 13 Ted Nugent album is, uh, spooky buddies. Uh, wow. Yeah. You're we're we feel very differently about this, this discography, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with, I, I understand. I, I kind of, I feel where you're going, but let's do it. There, there's a lot to there's a lot to you know appreciate about this, but you know, Spooky Buddies was of course the most controversial entry in the series, with many activist activist groups criticizing the infamous B Dog rap for being insensitive to dogs who can't rap. Of course, we had the big <laughs> we had the big B Dog Twitter cancellation and all that. It was a mess. Um, but that, you know, that's I mean, really when you come down, that's that's B Dog's best quality aside from him calling everybody dog like which is yeah. how cute is that as he's a dog and every time he says stuff like man we gotta get out of here dog you're like ah you're a dog uh, yeah <laughs> yeah there, there there's another there's another word he kept saying off on set but uh we can't repeat that here um but put aside the uh outraged pundits and you're left with an undeniable horror classic you know who among us didn't scream in terror at the first sight of the Halloween hound. Yeah. Fuck you. Yes, you did. Yes, yeah. you did. Everybody I did. shit bricks at that shit. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a it's a Halloween staple as far as I'm concerned. So I don't. Hell yeah. I don't know why it's this low for you, but shit. Okay. Yeah, I, I know it, it was hard, but you know, it's I I think I think it's more to do with like how. It's more of a deep-seated childhood trauma. It just scared me so much. I can't bring myself to watch it. I got, okay, I, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I feel I feel like we're coming at things from two different areas because um, I'm yeah. I'm I'm not uh, for my. Can I move on to my number thirteen? You done? Abs- absolutely, absolutely. My, my, we so it's here. so clearly I don't have I don't I'm not I don't have a, an affinity for uh, Santa because my number thirteen is the search for Santa Paws from twenty ten. Okay. This is the first spin-off of the spin-off because you had the buddies, then you had Santa Buddies, and then mm. this was the Search for Santa Paws, which was his own its own movie. And this one gets a little bit silly with this magical crystal icicle thing. Yeah. And um and and honestly, like I'm telling you, at, at this point, this is two years before the sequel, and already there's Santa overkill with the buddies. And I'm just like, you did the Santa thing one time. You don't need to come back and do more Santa because we get it. There's there's Santa. There's buddies. And, and, and really, when it comes to the Santa buddies, we already did Snow Buddies. So I'm just like, you know, there's a, there's a point where are you just churning out these things because you think kids are stupid or are you really trying to make some good quality stuff here? Um, so those, I mean, that's really to me the like the, probably the biggest gripes I have are those two, the two Santa offshoot things. Um, yeah. But you know, but shit, I mean, we have a, a whole lot of shit to go through. So, yeah. um, and, and the, the fact that like, those are the two that I think I have the, biggest gripes with you know says a lot about the the output of of mr nugent so um so moving on to your number 12. okay so uh keeping it festive here my number 12 is santa buddies Uh, okay the og and my reasons for this is it it's not as refined as the two later christmas inspired air buddies installments and and sure we get 
we got a little frustrated with Puppy Paws not realizing how good he had it. But, you know, few things spread holiday cheer more than watching the Christmas icicle stop melting, thanks to our puppy heroes. Um, but, you know, it's got some it's got some bangers on it, but it's definitely one of the lower um, Nugent albums for sure. For sure yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I don't I don't disagree. Um, yeah. for, for my number 12, I'm actually kind of I'm, I'm hitting on one you've already talked about. Um, which was kind of the ending of the original classic Nugent run. Um, uh, 2003 Air Bud spikes back. Um, and so the interesting thing is that, hold on, like I have notes, you know, for, for all these, because it's, it's a lot of albums to listen to. Um, but I was trying to find the name. So the majority of the movies are, are directed by Robert Vince. And like, it's so crazy. Like, the, like oh, I feel like out of 14 Excellent movies. Producer. I think he did 10. He directed 10 of the movies, I believe. So that's a, you know, it's a huge career for that guy. But Air Bud Spikes Back is directed by Mike Southern. And um, he, you know, has an amazing career on his own. But at this point, the problem is you're dealing with this, the, the fifth Air Bud movie, which we talked about. Like you're, you're going to run out of, of ball sports or <laughs> sports where it's somehow conceivable that Buddy can play the, whatever sport it is. So now he can play volleyball and that alone is kind of made me go. Yeah. I, I feel like it was inevitable that we got to volleyball, but did, but it's also that sort of idea of like, oh, okay, I think we're done now, especially when you, when you introduce a talking parrot, but I feel like the talking parrot was actually kind of important because I feel like the talking parrot planted the seed in the producers that said you know what maybe the animals should all talk and so yeah. that led them down that path so really as much as i don't like the talking parrot in this i feel like without the talking parrot the whole trajectory of where the buddies movies goes it, it's not it would be totally different movies probably yeah, um, it, it, but you know, this happened. Yeah, this one, this one's kind of you know, it's it's got its fun moments with the jewel thieves and 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 whatnot. But overall, I feel like they, you can tell that they've run out of, of of ideas just for Buddy to be a sports dog, and and honestly, at this point, they're they're not even giving credit to the dogs that are playing Buddy because the original Buddy died after the first movie. Yeah, and yeah. and it, once you get to I think movie three they don't even have a credit for the name of the dog that played buddy. So I'm just like, well, throw up, throw a bone literally <laughs> for them because we gotta, you gotta, I don't know. It's the star of the fucking movie. And you're just like, always oh, played by dog. It's definitely a mother jumbo situation. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like mother love bone, but with pedigree jumbo, you know, he died before he could really, Oh yeah, yeah, a little zinger there. That's a that's a deep grunt. That's a grunge deep cut. So, well, but yeah, rest, so rest in peace, Andrew Wood. And, and rest in peace, every every dog actor that played Buddy, because they're probably all dead now. So, <laughs> um, considering that, last sadly, movie much was, like most grunge musicians, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh. to, but to, so it's two thousand three. So, if the dog that played Buddy in two thousand three, he would be. 21 years old now at dogs, least dogs rarely live that long yeah um yeah. and golden retrievers i don't think do but anyway hmm. that's a, you're getting a little bit too much into the minutia of the nugent catalog i think what's we have so many to go through i feel like we should just you know absolutely we say the important things and then move on with the discography so let's move on to your number 11 okay. ted nugent release Okay, so my number 11 Nugent release is Airbud World Pup. Uh, I can't I can't believe that you're putting these classics this low in the list. It's it's a uh, it's interesting. I I have a hot I'll, take. I'll hear you out though. Okay, it's not I, I got a hot take with this one. Um living in Britain is very easy for me who is not a uh, football or soccer <laughs> fan to um 
you know, keep up with this with this sort of thing. I'm much more invested in stuff like NFL, uh, the basketball, the the you know, all of that sort of thing. My tastes are very American for a British guy. Um, you know, so for me, I found it hard to relate to the to the soccer focus of this can, movie. Can I ask you a serious question? Yeah. Do Do you get annoyed when people call it soccer? No, because I'm, I'm not. I'm not precious about it at all. Because I'm pre- I'm pretty sure. No, I may be wrong. I'll have to look this up later. But I'm I, I'm pretty sure I read at one point that the original name of the sport is soccer, and mm-hmm the nickname for it became football and then that's what everybody started calling it and then over here we were still calling it soccer but then we created another sport called football which is around the world american football so i'm just like that's pretty interesting that it actually is called soccer but i've always felt really stupid saying soccer because it sounds dorky football sounds good soccer like i barely know her i'm not (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah it's 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 one of those things where you know i'm not i'm not particularly um precious about it i'm I'm very much if if i was going to watch any any sports over here it'd be more in line with rugby you know so so you so you so you don't you don't watch football i i don't partake in the footy no do you so you didn't you didn't see that ludicrous display last night (laughs) <laughs> see the the problem with arsenal is they always try and walk it in anyway sorry a little it crowd right there <laughs> That's, yeah yeah the, i know exactly what you mean my my life in high school especially in um pe lessons was basically that episode of the it crowd where yeah i just i didn't follow I, it i, 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 I saw into um nfl though yeah Oh, interesting. I saw a, because I'm not into any sports at all. I saw some stand-up comedian, and I wish I could remember his name because the bit was funny, where he talks about being a non-sports fan. Whenever somebody comes to talk to you about sports, there's literally a four-word phrase that you can say that takes care of the situation. So if somebody comes up to you and says, oh, did you see the, the game yesterday? Then all you say to them is, can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? And then, so it's like it's setting up that, yes, I did see it. Yes, I am interested in talking about it. And now over to you to talk more about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to start oh, using that whenever somebody says that. Do you watch the Super Bowl? I'm be like, can you believe it? And then, yeah. boom. <laughs> That's genius. Genius, genius bit, whoever that is. I don't, I, yeah. that's the problem with TikTok is that I'll see a little bit of a comedian and then I'll move on with my life and I'll go, who the fuck did that bit? That was funny. Uh, yeah. 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 I, mean, I, w- I will say though, to its credit, you know, this movie, this movie has often been called the greatest soccer movie ever made. And with all due respect to the big green, I have to agree. You know, and Sh- and with- Shaolin soccer. You ever see that one? No, I didn't. That That's the one. pretty cool though. It's the one, it's the, the guys that made like a, did they do Kung Fu Hustle? But they did like their earlier movies. They're Shaolin. I think it's Shaolin Soccer. Sha- I don't know if it, what the original title is because obviously it's not Shaolin Soccer. Um, but it's like a sports comedy um, with shit. like Kung Fu soccer um, things. And there's another one too they did around that time that's really good as well. And I blanking on what it is anyway it doesn't matter let's move on with with world I, we're once again we're, we're taking the focus off of ted nugent which is what we shouldn't be doing no, so no, absolutely yeah. back to the actual release uh <laughs> world pup I, I, w- I will say with you know if we if we ignore the soccer element for a moment we do have the fact that it is the first to introduce a serious romantic element with um buddy finding his soulmate and having a letter of his own so that's pretty that's pretty cool bit of world yeah. building setting yeah. up setting up the next generation you know yeah for the yappy motherfuckers like that my dog back there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah yeah so that's my number 11 uh cool uh Apple world pop all right here i think at this point this is when it got kind of difficult for me because um there's you have you have classic Nugent, you have moving into the '80s Nugent, and 
there's a there's a like I said, he kind of settles into doing a particular thing, and things get kind of it's, the quality of them is all very close. So it gets really difficult from this point on. Um, but uh, all all have qualities that I think are uh, um, very um, enjoyable. No, number eleven is uh, Treasure Buddies from cool. 20, 2012, which is the sixth Buddies movie, which would make it the 11th, something like that, movie overall. <laughs> something like that, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, but it is exactly what you think. Yeah, they go to Egypt, and it's like Indiana Jones Buddies, which it, if you if you literally come to me with an idea for a movie – and you say the words Indiana Jones, I'm in. I, nice. I, you know, it's like you could literally be like, look, it's a movie about a bunch of penguins who time travel to to ancient Egypt. And I go, well, it sounds kind of dumb. And it's like Indiana Jones. I'm in. Whatever. I'm just sold with Indiana Jones. So even though this movie is has a lot has its flaws and it's, you know, once again, it's the same thing with the sports thing. Now they're moving like, well, what kind of movie genre can we throw these doggies into? And and I understand that part of it, but I just I enjoyed the Indiana Jones aspect of it so much um, that uh, it was tough to put it here, but I had to go somewhere. So my number eleven, Treasure Buddies. Very nice. I I too am a I'm a big fan of the old Indiana Jones. Yeah, that could be a ranking at some point. That'd be yeah. A good one. Yeah. That, do like, I do like I, a movie sidebar. Yeah. I, yeah. Because I've wanted to do Star Wars for a while. Are you like for reals? Like, like, like literally, like, well, how many movies is that? It's a lot. Yeah. It's, we, it's, we, 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 we would stick to the Star Wars movies, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, Rogue One and Solo would be omitted. That, that They're kind of like, we treat them like compilations. <laughs> To be well, fair, Rogue One would be really high up for me because I really liked that movie. Okay, well, well, well how about didn't this? see Solo? I didn't see Solo though. Yet. Yeah, let me Star Wars movies. Maybe like theatrically released Star Wars movies. Okay. Because I really think all the rest of them are just Star Wars movies except for Solo and Rogue One. So it would be. Hmm. There's because what is it? You got the Skywalker saga. Uh, which is the main nine movies. Yeah. Uh, you've got the Clone Wars animated film, uh, and you've now, also you've also got Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and Solo, a Star Wars story. So we're, if we're sticking with live action theatrical releases, were they going to do? weren't they going to do a Boba Fett movie, or did did that get uh, shelved? I'm pretty sure, I thought it was a. I thought it was a um, series. Oh, you might be right. I don't know. I, I can't keep up with all of it. But yeah, we can, we can do that just because I actually haven't seen. I think there's three three total that I haven't seen because I haven't seen Solo and I haven't seen the last two leg, uh, um, legit Star Wars movies. I saw hmm. I saw the reboot one, whatever. Not the reboot, but you know what I mean? The one where it kind of came back. What was that called? Um, oh, um the Force Awakens is that what it's called? Yeah, the Force, Force Force Awakens. Yeah, Force Awakens. I saw the, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, are the, are the new. Thing. I didn't. I didn't see the last two. So really, it's not that much catching up. I have to do. It's just three movies. And um, Solo looked fun, so I'd be in for that. I will say one of the most cop out lines I've ever heard in a movie is in the Rise of Skywalker. Do you know about the Rise of Skywalker? What happens in it? No. Okay, I won't spoil it for you because it's one hell of a line. All, all I all I know is that it is brutally on the nose, though. <laughs> one of the movie really upset Star Wars fans, and that's the one that I'm like, well, I'll probably like that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so all right, um, sorry, Mister, sorry, Mister Nugent. We do sometimes have our uh, our tangents that we go off on, but back to the task at hand. Uh, number 10, we're number, man, we're at the top 10, top 10 Ted Nugent albums right now. Okay. So, uh, my number 10 Ted Nugent release is Snow Buddies. All right. Yeah. Uh, I can't really, I can't really argue with this one, but okay. Uh, yeah, so some might bump this a little lower for using a non golden retriever as such a major character. 
Uh, personally, I think that that is uh, specious. But uh, keep an open well, mind. That's the first time I've ever heard that word. I'll write yeah, I, that one down. Speciest. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I think I'll I think you'll find that Shasta wins you over. Um, but it's it it it's a very unique movie in the sense that it's like you could watch it at Christmas, but it's not one of the Christmas specific ones. That, so that's why I think it works better. It's very versatile, and and I will definitely give it that. That's definitely it's like it's a, like you don't you don't need to just watch Cool Runnings at Christmas time. You can watch it anytime, just because there's snow involved. Yeah, you know. and I will raise my hand and admit that uh, even if it is the other end of the year, if I get a hankering for a festive movie, I will watch Home Alone, even if it is July. Well, that's why movies like that are the best because Home Alone is a is a Christmas movie, but it's not called Boy Home Alone at Christmas Time. It's yeah. it's or or you know or Santa's Helper gets left at home or some shit like that. So yeah. it's those are the those to me those are the best Christmas movies, the ones that just take place at Christmas where there's enough there's enough of that festive feel, but it's not cramming it down your throat like Santa, Santa, Santa. I get tired of it, Santa. You could very easily change two things about the Home Alone script, and it becomes a slasher flick. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like yeah, if, yeah. if you if you set it at Halloween, and instead of burglars, they're like Freddy Krueger. That would well, or or just change it to legit burglars who are mean and actually want to hurt people and not bumbling yeah. morons. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. What if they? What if? What if we did Home Alone, but Joe Pesci was actually allowed to swear? <laughs> you little motherfucker, you! You know. <laughs> um, uh, it's a thing. What, what, are, what are you? We still talking about? What are we? What are we on now? Oh, we're still on uh, Snow Buddies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I actually have I have this on DVD at somewhere here. I remember when it came out. And you know. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bore you. Jeez. No, no, no. no it's, it's uh, you know, I've, I've been working hard a lot. I've been working very hard this week at uh, at some sh at some shit, and it's the working uh, man. Call me the working man. Working man. I guess that's what I am. Um, but yeah, snow buddies, cool. Hey. Ah, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. so my number 10 um uh, i i i'm just gonna jump into it because it's like it gets it gets real difficult at this point uh my number 10 is Airbud seventh inning fetch from 2002 and this okay. is i believe this is when robert vince took over as director and you really start to see his mark on the movies at this point yeah um because it's the fourth movie and um it i believe it's the last one that has the main kid from the first three For and sure. but this time it introduces his sister who plays baseball and that's i mean honestly it's the the interesting part of the movie isn't the baseball part of the movie for me because it's like well okay it's another ball sport and buddy can play this sport too of course because by movie four you're just like well i'm sure buddy can play every sport and um, they're never going to have a problem with the dog playing sports because they they took care of that in the first movie. They read in the mm -hmm. rules that there is no mention that a dog can't play basketball. So I'm assuming the same rule book exists in every sport. So, but the interesting thing about this movie is, sure, there's still like dog nappers. There's always dog nappers wanting to mm -hmm. wanting to get Buddy or some babies or something. That mean but, old dog catcher. But in this yeah. movie the the dog nappers specifically want to to kidnap buddy to test him because they believe that he has specific doggy genes that make him good at sports hmm. and they're wanting to clone and make sports doggies so they can make a whole bunch of money you know Fascinating. and and honestly that's a pretty damn good idea because i'm just like yeah if you can just if you can just extract some genes from a from a sports dog and make your own team of sports dogs and then mm -hmm. continue continue to make because would you I mean wouldn't you go see sport a sports dog sporting event like I would oh yeah 
Yeah. And it doesn't matter what the sport is. But so that's an interesting um, um, part of this movie. But other than that, the like sports aspect of roids. it. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the sports aspect of this isn't as um, interesting to me because it, it, it is kind of wearing thin already at this point. Mm. Um, la- last movie that has a credited dog. The dog's name is Shooter that plays Buddy in Seventh Inning Fetch. Rest in peace, Shooter, because that's fucking over 20 years ago. So I'm assuming <laughs> that Shooter has passed on. But got to give, gotta give props to the dogs that played Buddy because Absolutely. without them... There's no movie. Um, so that brings us. We're, we're well into the top nine. My, my, my dogs are extra loud today. Maybe it's because we're covering Ted Nugent and they're hearing all the Nugent talk. And my dogs are just like, we get it. Go Nuge. You know, <laughs> wang, dang, sweet, boom, tang. That's what they're, that's what they're doing back there. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So the, I I apologize. I should be muting it, but I feel like you know whatever. Who the fuck cares? No, um, no, let's no, move no. on to your, to your number nine Nugent release. This was a hard one for me because it's a classic, but it had big shoes to fill, mm. uh, and my number nine is Airbud Golden Receiver uh man yeah yeah it's yeah it's hard to follow a legend so no one blames golden receiver for failing to live up to the original air bud but let's not overlook how smart it is when they changed golden retriever to golden receiver they saw an opportunity there and jumped on it i know i'm not 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 trying to jump on this movie early because it's higher up on my list but Mm -hmm. Is there how if you made like a top ten collection of the best moments in movie history, one of them has got to be when the coach goes, that that there ain't no golden retriever, that there's a golden receiver, like <laughs> I'm not yeah. like that's like bad. that's like like who like what kind of genius scriptwriter came up with that. And it's and if you look at it, it's it's a cinematic piece of work right there. That scene, yeah. the way it's shot, it's uh, it's and, amazing. And anyway, I, lo- I love how after he says that it goes slow motion and he puts on aviators and the Top Gun theme starts playing. That's cinematic gold. Do you do you you, you know that like that's a secret in the film industry where they say if you, if you really need to to boost up the quality of a scene and the the effect of it you put that top gun song in mm. there because it's got that little bell thing ring yeah doo, doo, you know it's like whatever and then you once that once that comes in the, the audience is just eating eating out of your hand at that point uh, are there uh, and, and i've asked myself are there more righteous guitar melodies than the top gun thing i genuinely don't know like just the way it builds and builds and builds just yeah goosebumps every time and then the moment steve stevens just comes in it's just so good and it's not shreddy but it doesn't need to be it's just tasteful no. i'm up in the air and you know legs akimbo on an f14 tomcat just playing killer guitar lines yeah yeah it's really tapped into an emotion there and they just balled it yeah there there are some there are some things in life that just that just make you feel glad to be alive and i think that's probably that's up there yeah and like uh, there is there is something about this movie you know is it a little effed up to watch people intentionally try to hurt a dog on the football field sure but (laughs) But that, it's the, it's the spirit of the game, you know. It is it is the spirit of the game. Um, but you know, this movie also had the brilliant idea to use Russian characters as the bad guys. I mean, you know, it's this is pure, uh, you know, this is pure Cold War love fest. Yeah, right yeah. here. <laughs> pretty, it's a pretty genius move, really, with with the with the writers in that particular. Just because, like, if you had made him American, it wouldn't have had the same effect. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it it definitely needs 
And with the Cold War basically resuming as we speak, uh, where um, when I wanted the 80s back, this is not what I meant. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm with you. So, so with that, um, that is my number nine, Airbud Golden Receiver. Sweet. I will, I will give it one thing. It is one of the best titles in this list. Yeah. Ar- I agree. Arguably the best. I agree. Um, my number nine is, uh, is Santa Buddies, the original San- the original uh, of the Santa Buddies movies. And while like I don't, I'm not into the Santa thing. I almost feel like the um, my notes got all mixed up. It it was inevitable that they were going to make a Santa movie just because that's what you do with kids movies and stuff like that. So I understood that. So getting that out of the way, it's the same thing. I'm just like, it makes sense. They fucked it up by doing two more after this, but um, it, you know, the buddies are are Santa's helpers. And, and, and the thing about this movie is that there were two buddies movies made in 2009. There was space buddies, which I haven't talked about yet because that's way, that's much higher up on my list and Santa Buddies, and in Santa Buddies, they got Christopher Lloyd to be in the movie. So yeah, that they did. So that 2009, to me, is like a big year for uh, yeah. for the for the Buddies franchise. Um, but out of the two, Santa Buddies is the lesser of the two. Mm. Um, but it's only because I'm just not into the Santa movie aspect of it all. But if you take that out, it's a fun little romp of a movie. And the dogs are cute, and you know you get to the point where you 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 have your you have your favorites. Uh, Mud Bud's probably my favorite. I don't know. Yeah, it, it changes from movie to movie, but I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 re- it's really hard. Like I said, you get to this point in the discography, and like the quality is is kind of it gets closer together, um, so it's hard to like really distinguish because even if you even if you're talking about a classic album. You know, you can't shit on the fact that later on there was still quality there. So, yeah. um, so it's it's weird. It feels weird saying these things about Ted Nugent albums because that's so not. I, that was not on my twenty twenty four bingo card. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, so, but you know, it's 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 an experience. You know, overall, and that's what Crankton Ranked is all about: the experience. So let's move on uh, with your number eight Ted Nugent album. Okay, so my number eight Ted Nugent album is The Search for Santa Paws. I can't I don't know how this made it this high up, but okay. It it came it came from I thought about it and and I genuinely sat with this and I said, Who says prequels can't work? And I think Santa Buddies was a fine film. But Santa Paul's himself got a little too much screen time for most of our taste. So by going yeah. back in time to show the nascent Paul's saving Santa, that you know this movie was able to capture so much more of the Christmas goodness, as in in a more organic way, as opposed to Christmas dog, Christmas yeah. dog. Yeah, <laughs> you know. You know? <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. <laughs> Christmas dog. <laughs> Just don't don't do it again. <laughs> what Christmas dog? No. <laughs> I think it's from the lack the lack of food. Maybe is what is what my problem is today. Um. Anyway, so uh, I think that yeah. might have been Christmas dog. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um. That, 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 I want to. I want to see that in the comments, everybody. All the Christmas dog in the comments. Um, anyway, when I say it, it's not funny. <laughs> what are you what? trying to say, Christmas dog? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> All right. Just, uh, just the image you... of the goofy ass looking dog that they cast in Santa Paul's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's probably just because you're also. Tr- it's almost like you're just putting it in my fi- Christmas dog. Yeah, okay. Christmas All dog. Right. All right. Why is this a Christmas dog? It's just because it's Christmas. But what about when it's summertime? Is it now He's summertime? He's got a dog? fucking hat, dude. Christmas <laughs> dog. <laughs> he, does. he 
he does. A hat really, really, you know, pulls a whole idea together, doesn't it? Absolutely. Really, you know, it's the, it's the uh, cherry on the proverbial Christmas pud. <laughs> are you are you done with Santa? Does this, are we talking about search for Santa Paws is what we're on, right? The search for Christmas dog. <laughs> I tried my best. I tried so hard. Um, are, are, but are, you, are we are we moving on? That's definitely a best off moment. If 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 we're gonna go down the route of doing Can I, best offs. Let's be fair, the entire episode, this entire episode is a best of show. Okay. So Ooh. you're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Because if like we, if we tried to do a best of compilation, it would be three years long. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. but I mean really like it's it's a it's a it's a monumental event doing Ted Nugent's albums. And we're clearly having a blast. The best kind of episode that we could do. Absolutely. So, is it my turn? 2008? Yeah, I'm done with Christmas. Why, did I, why did I say 2008? <laughs> <laughs> number eight. Um, Simpler times. <laughs> my number eight from 2008, Snow Buddies. So ah. it's the second Buddies movie. And um, it's the last that actually has Buddy in the movie. But... It's one of those things where it's like such a duh idea. It's like if somebody had come to me and said, hey, we're going to have multiple dogs in a, in, in a buddies movie. My first thought would be, when are they going to be a sled team? Because <laughs> it's yeah. just seems, it just seems perfect. So um, I think that this one has the, 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 most ridiculous beginning premise because the dogs all they all they want to do is go get some ice cream which i don't think dogs are actually supposed to be eating ice cream anyway but they jump into an ice cream truck or an ice cream uh you know a, not not an actual ice cream truck but like a hauling truck that hauls ice cream yeah and it turns out the ice cream that was being shipped somewhere on an, in, in an airplane and then eventually they they fall out from the sky in alaska and uh and then uh they form a they form a dog sled team which that i mean that that right there is what makes this movie um high up in the list for me because i'm just like yeah they should have been a dog sled team from the first movie hmm. should be movie number two should have been like hey you buddy's great let's get 11 more and let's start a dog sled team so I don't know how many dogs are on a dog sled team, but I'm assuming 12 is a good number. As long as it's even, right? Because you want the same number of dogs on each side and Rudolph in the front. I don't know. Rudolph's not a dog. <laughs> it's not even a Christmas dog. <laughs> All right, moving on to number seven. You're number seven. Okay, so my number seven is Super Buddies. Oh, dude, why did you do this? Well, you know, I looked at the six I put above it and, you know, I've, I've, I've never been much of a superhero kind of guy. I was always more into the sci-fi stuff, you know, Star yeah. Wars, yeah. Doctor Who, Star Trek. That was, that was always my nerdy interest. So yeah. like, yeah. you know, I had a hard time getting into like everything at once, you know, so when I picked something, I was honed in on it. Um, but Super Buddies, you know, some have questioned whether our heroes like Marvel's Fantastic Four ripped off this film's concept of ordinary beings gaining superpowers from an extraterrestrial source. You know, others have argued that the Fantastic Four were actually created 50 years earlier. I'm not an expert in time, so I can't say for yeah, sure either way. It's splitting hairs, really, yeah. if, you, if you ask me. Yeah, but what, what, what I can say that is that there are no superpowered puppies i'd rather have in my corner apart from maybe um underdog from the 2000s movie underdog um, yeah Vo voiced voiced by jason lee hmm. yeah yeah it's 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 fine it's 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 <laughs> it's a it's a case of is a case of where it's it's not it's not necessarily catering to my favorite interests, yeah. but you know, I can't deny its quality. So that's why it kind of found its way into the midsection of this. Hell, it's in the upper half. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I guess you're right. 
Mm-hmm. No I, worries. I, I mean, it's it, I, it's going to be higher up for me, mostly just because I feel like there are those Ted Nugent albums that are popular and well regarded for a reason. Yeah. And yeah. and I couldn't find any reason to disagree with that so much so that I'm like, it's reinforcing the classic aspect of this album that it holds up even with somebody like me, you know, 30, 40 years down the line. So, yeah. so, so my, so my, my top are, are kind of like, it's going to be a lot of like, duh, of course those are at the top. Um, but remember, I'm like, you know, I'm basically new to the Ted Nugent discography. So, yeah. um, but, um, yeah, that being said, um, we're get, we're getting to the good shit here, ladies and gentlemen. So my, my number seven is the 2006 film air buddies, the original spinoff of the air buddies, um, directed by Robert Vince. Cause he okay. did fucking, he did all the fucking shit. Um, and, uh, this movie, it, it's, it's pretty genius. Like I told you, like you had the catalyst of the talking parrot and then all yeah. of a sudden you're like air buddies. Okay. So it's air bud, but there's more than one and you're already in, you're already like, well, that's what I've been saying. Let's have more dogs. But then you get to the movie and you're like, they fucking talk. Yeah. So it's like adding another layer of genius to the writing of the film, because it's just like, you could have just left that part out and I would have been in on air buddies, but adding the talking in all of a sudden you get so much more of a, of a deep sort of character, um, uh, a, a rich character, I don't know, analysis, I guess, with a lot of these different, with each of the buddies, um, who, who eventually become, you know, their own kind of separate characters with their own, you know, stories and stuff. But this is the beginning of that. None of that shit's going to happen. You know, you're not going to really get to know Mud Bud and you know until later, but yeah. But right, but right this is a great one just because you got Buddy's kids, you're 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 moving forward with the story of Buddy, but Buddy doesn't need to be there. Um it's just about his kids. So, um I don't know, it's I think it's great and it's one of those it's it's really one of those moments in cinema where there was a great idea and the filmmakers just went with it and then you get you get air buddies so there you go um on to on to number six cool so here we, we are swiftly approaching the love zone um oh yeah right here i'd say it starts here with air bud seventh inning fetch yeah so, which uh, which that title also is not yeah. great. It's so not great that it's great. It's that yeah. so so bad it's good. Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. Uh, but like, we all believed a dog could play basketball. Yeah. Football, soccer at a championship winning level. But baseball. Yeah. Surely not. But. Wait, if you think the lack of the ability to wear a glove is going to slow this fucker down, he'll just catch the damn ball in his mouth. Uh, but he but, he uh, can wear a hat, and as we've yeah. already discussed, that's what you need. Yeah, yeah. Baseball dog. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're like, they're like, you put some damn respect on baseball dog, right? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Every dog one day hopes to be a baseball dog or a Christmas dog. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> now you don't even have to say anything. <laughs> just, just do the motion. I don't have to say what. <laughs> it could be a loaf of bread. Who the fuck knows? It doesn't matter. I'm gonna laugh at it anyway. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking some some opera on the TV or some shit in an advert. I don't know. But uh, I mean, how's this dog gonna hit the baseball? Fuck you. That's how. Buddy can hold that bat in his mouth and swing his head and still be better at the plate. 
than anyone. And yeah. it it just man, it is just one of those overcoming adversary stories that just really fills you with inspiration, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, with the, all the other all the other movies coming up to this, all all Bud had to do was get it through the goal or th- or through the net, you know. This this is like this is this is the Rocky Four of the Air Bud movies. Oh man, that's got, that's uh, that's high praise other, right there. He's got a whole other challenge going on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really, and, and honestly, like and I didn't talk about this in that movie, but it's funny that you bring up Rocky Four because like there I didn't even make the connection before, but there is that that scene where like Buddy is not entirely sure if he needs to be going to play this final game because it could be very dangerous for him so he gets into his car and he goes for a little drive and there's that montage where he's yeah. like thinking he's thinking about there's the game no easy way out there's no shortcut no. yeah that one and and he's and he it's it's a really great montage too where it's mm. just really it really brings forward all of the different aspects of the different films and what he's gone through and yeah. I'm, maybe I need to rate this film a little higher next time I think about it. But you, you that was a good pull there, the Rocky IV pull. How much of Rocky IV is montage? <laughs> I'm going to say at least 30%. Uh, what makes Rocky IV a unique entry into the franchise is the 29 minutes of montage. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I would not fucking change it. Featured in eight separate scenes dispersed throughout the film. Wow. <laughs> so wait, so wait, so they said how many minutes? Uh, 29 minutes, which makes it roughly one third of the whole film. <laughs> nice. That's badass. Like, <laughs> I was almost, I was almost right. I was almost there. Yeah. Oh, dude. We're going to have to do a, a cranked and ranked Rocky. Yeah. That would, that would be awesome. We- in that particular case, we should do the Creed movies too, maybe. Mm-hmm. Put them all together. Yeah, yeah, p- potentially. I, I, you know what the funny thing is, is I was we we haven't talked about this, but I was I hadn't seen Rocky Five since I was when it came out. I don't know how old I was when that came out. Was it eighty nine or something like that? When that one came out ninety. Uh, ninety. Um, yeah. So I was like twelve, um, but I hadn't watched it since then. And like the ending of that movie is fucking awful. Now it's I'm not talking about the story. I'm talking about he's he's fighting the younger guy in the street and yeah. it keeps and it keeps doing a close up of the younger guy's trainer and he's just going ah! <laughs> Go watch it again. It literally just says it I don't know why it keeps going to him and, and he's not yelling like get him or get off him. He's just going ah! <laughs> And I'm like, who the it... fuck, whose choice was that for the movie? It's <laughs> fucking stupid. Rocky Five, or a- ending, ending fight. fight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save and, that. And, I'm gonna and, save that. And me, at the end of it, Rocky punches him so hard that he flies in the air and lands on a car. <laughs> at that point, they're not even trying anymore with the movies. They're just like, fuck it, yeah. whatever. It's it's funny. I think the real the the real highlight of that whole sequence is where um, said trainer runs into the middle of the fight holding Christmas dog and just keeps <laughs> yelling, ah! <laughs> "Christmas dog!" <laughs> <laughs> and then another right. guy, it, like his evil twin, runs on with baseball dog, and they start fighting too. <laughs> And then the doll, all of a sudden it's a dog fight next to yeah. Rocky and whatever the young guy's name was. I, I I don't remember his name, but I also think he passed away. Oh shit! As as did Sylvester Stallone's son, who's also in that movie. Um. Anyway, sorry to shit on Rocky Five, but it is the weakest of, <laughs> of the Rocky <laughs> movies by far. Um, Could have been good though. I think that's what pisses me off about the movie is because the actual premise, I'm like, this is pretty cool. And they could have handled it if they had made it more like a Rocky one, the first Rocky, a little more low key than, uh, 
Yeah, but that yeah, that ending is fucking ridiculous. Watch that after you're done. Everybody, a homework assignment. Go watch the last <gasps> like, five, five, the last five minutes of the of Rocky Five. Just because I, 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 I man, it's definitely more than once that it happens. But I feel like it happens three or four times where it's just the trainer screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the same clip every time. It's just I don't think the it's the same one, but that would be that would be even funnier if it was. But I don't I don't think it is. Anyway, all right. I'm sorry. We <laughs> who's, what? What? who's who's that guy? Who's that like he was he was running for some kind of um political campaign and, and Oh uh Howard ah! Dean. Howard Dean. Howard Dean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was enough. That was enough for everybody to say fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, podcast listeners, but Eddie just did the Christmas dog hands, which is I'm sorry, I feel like we've been neglecting the podcast listeners. The um he essentially is holding like he's holding a dog, or it could be a loaf of bread towards the camera and saying Christmas dog or baseball dog. But at that point, <laughs> anyway, you get the you get the idea. I'm sorry, we have taken the focus off of Ted Nugent so much. I feel like we're we might be being disrespectful to him. Yeah, um, which is was not what we were going for. So I apologize that we're doing too many, um, you know, diversions and and tangents. But let's, mm-hmm. let's get back on track. What we what were you were you done with your number six? Um, <clears throat> seventh inning fetch. Yes, yeah. About. My my number six is wrapped up. Cool. My number six is Air Bud World Pup from two thousand. It's a fucking mm. twenty four year old movie here. Um, directed by Bill Bannerman, who who did a fantastic job with with this movie. Third movie in the series, first one that went straight to video. So yeah, already. But it's just because Golden Receiver didn't do as well as they wanted it to, which I think is a yeah. fucking crime because it's one of those sequels that I think holds up a lot. But yeah, I mean, that's just me. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously, Buddy ends up being on the co ed soccer team. And because of that, there's another dog. There's, and that's Molly. Molly is brought into the story now, which brings. Uh, you know, Buddy is really into her, and so then you have doggy relations. They really pushed the envelope with this movie because, like, mm-hmm. there were no doggy relations in the first two movies. This was bringing a new element here, yeah. and um, and of course, guess what? Buddy can play soccer because, of course, he can. Holy! And uh, and then the puppies are kidnapped, and like they like the, you know people want to kidnap them because they're they're fancy sports dogs, but um, I think really. The movie, it's. I think if we didn't have a director like Bill Bannerman at the helm for this one, it may not be as high up for me. But I think as a film, it just holds up so well as like cinematography, editing, sound design, all of those things. Um, it's just really well done. Even if this point you're just like, all right, Bud plays another sport. But um, I just think that it's it's just a really great example of of good filmmaking um maybe if the writing isn't in, in, insanely good but yeah so i think that's why um air bud world pup is at my number six which brings us into the fucking top five ted nugent albums yeah. like it's like this is the big deal right here and like i said um i'm a newbie so it's gonna be a lot of like basic no- bitch noogie newbie yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of basic bitch choices here because I'm new to the, to his catalog, and there are those there are those albums that are called classics by a lot of people, and I can't disagree. So let's move into our top five. Okay, so my number five is Air Buddies. Okay, yeah. Uh, and you know, we could have watched Buddy play different sports forever. You know, I particularly wanted to see him demonstrate his competitive shooting skills for the unmade Air Bud with a Vengeance. Yeah. Or or um the 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 there was another one too. I don't know if you knew about this, but there was one where he was playing chess and it was called Searching for Buddy Fisher. 
And ah, that was, yeah, I but that, the, of that. <laughs> when they, they, they had all these ideas and because the movies weren't doing as well as they wanted them to, that's why they kind of had the idea for the, but for the bunch of buddies instead of just buddy doing different sports, but the chess one would have been also fascinating. They were also going to make, uh, an adult movie called bud stuff. Uh, and, uh, I, I did not know about that one. That's, I got to look that up. Bud stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, um, cl- clear, clearly, there were some uh, inappropriate things said on set, and it never happened. Yeah, um, and plus, when you're really taking a franchise in that direction, I think it's time to kind of remember remember who your audience is. Yeah, much so. like much like Ren and Stimpy's adult party cartoon, it it just took it too far. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm glad they didn't go with that, but it would have been nice yeah. to see. Um, some shooting and some chess uh, yeah. from Buddy. But, you know, we can imagine those movies in our minds, I guess. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it, Air Buddies ushered us into a grand new era and their <laughs> combination of wacky adventure and aggressive cuteness have delighted <laughs> the world ever since. <laughs> aggressive cuteness. I mean, you're not wrong. That is appropriate. That is highly appropriate. Hell, Yeah. I mean, I speak. I speak the truth. Yeah, you do. Have you ever seen that meme template where it's like, it's clearly from a worksheet of some description for like a, like a kid in a religious studies lesson, and it's like, <laughs> they hated Jesus because he told them the truth, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, him is there's a speech bubble where someone will put like, you know something relatable in there they hated jesus because they told him that tr- he told them the truth now that one always makes me laugh when i have seen up. that yeah yeah it's, it's like yes i've read the terms and conditions <laughs> if not the terms and conditions or something like that but yeah um yeah air buddies yeah. it reinvigorated the franchise and you know at a time when it needed it most yeah yeah I, I agree. Um, so for my top five, we're getting into to albums that so many people have talked about, and I don't really have a lot extra to add. Like some, you know, it's like they're classics, and they're classics for a reason. But I'm gonna do my best just to put like my own little little spin on it, I guess. Uh, number five, Spooky Buddies from uh, 2011. Nice. The fifth Jonas Buddies love. movie. They, I love. Spook, like I said, it is a Halloween staple, and and I just think that like so I feel the complete opposite with like Santa movies. I'm like get fucked one Santa movie a year. Halloween movies, they should be a Halloween of everything. There should yeah. be a ha- Halloween Fast and Furious. There should be a Halloween Barbie movie. Um, there should be um, you know like every every popular movie there should be a Halloween version of that movie, and I would be very happy. Um, yeah. And so, Spooky Buddies may not be the best Buddies movie, but man, I, it is, it is a, it's a blast. The Halloween aspect just does it for me, and and yeah. and there's some genuine, like like frightening moments in the movie, and uh, sure. I don't think people talk about that a lot. But yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, if you go online, you, you see a lot of praise for Spooky Buddies, and sure. I don't, I can't argue with any of that. Um, so it ends up at my number five. Cool. I mean, we we are plowing through these now through these Ted Nugent albums, but, uh, my number four Ted Nugent album is, uh, treasure buddies. All right. It's a little Indiana Jones action. Yeah. Yeah. A little Indiana Jones, uh, Indiana before... bones. Yeah. They could have fucking, they could have called it. They that. could have, if they had asked oh. me when they were making the movie, I would have been like, eh, how about call it Indiana bones? But then maybe they would have thought that would have been the adult movie they were going to make. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. They probably thought about that and then went, eh, let's go with Treasure Buddies. It's cuter. Yeah, yeah. It sounds a little too dirty for Treasure Buddies. Treasure uh, Buddies actually does sound kind of dirty when you think about it. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> but, you, know? you find a buddy in your treasure. Or, 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 or a treasure, treasure in your, your, in your buddy. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I mean, it was funny, but not as funny. 
Hey, hey, like, if you preface anything with this now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do like a, a re revisit Slayer episode or something. It'd be like Thrash Dog. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my number four, Treasure Buddies. I mean, before this movie, was there any great outcry to see a golden retriever puppy in an Indiana Jones style fedora? You know, I'm playing with a monkey. Probably yeah, for, not for me, but I mean, I, yeah, I don't know about the general public, but yeah, yeah. You know, it that's what great art can do: give you what you need, even though you you didn't know you needed it. And I, yeah. and I think, I think it's 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 up there with the greats. You know. As far, as far as I'm concerned, it goes, uh, you know, uh, fucking Last Crusade, Temple, Raiders, and um, Treasure Buddies up top. Yeah. 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 I mean, hard, hard to hard to argue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy the hell out of it, so I can't argue with that. Hell yeah. All right. I mean, we, we, we're, we're trying to fit in a lot of shit here, so let's move, let's Great move on. Great record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my number four, um, we talked about this before, but it, but we, and this was one where I'm like, I don't know how this album was so low for you, but it's it's uh, much higher for me. Um, Air Bud Golden Receiver from 1998, um, directed by Richard Martin, who uh, who was a, who was actually a TV actor. He uh, he was on the show Laugh In when he was younger. Um, and then at his older age, he directed um, dog sports movies. I mean, really, like when you think about it, that's kind of the dream, you know. When you're just when you're getting to the progression that is fun. When, well, when you're getting to the sunset of your career and you're still wanting to be active, what better thing to do than to direct dog sports yeah. movies? So fucking dogs. Yeah. So um, Golden Receiver was the last one in the theater, and unfortunately, it didn't do very well, which I, I still don't understand. It's baffling to me. Um, and unfortunately, it was the, it showed that like you, we were going to have to have a, a, a sort of a revolving cast of dogs playing Buddy because the original Air Buddy <clears throat> passed away right before this movie was being made or sometime around the movie being made. So he, he was sick. He didn't get yeah. to play Air Bud. But here's Fame the got to him quick. Yeah. I know. I mean, it's a it's a story as old as time, but you know, just every yeah. everybody just you know don't if don't let the fame go to your head and be smart, even if you're a dog. But the the interesting thing about this is that the original buddy. What was the original buddy's name? Hold on a second. Original buddy's name. Why do I? Oh, they don't. I don't know. They don't have the original buddy's name. Didn't give. There, there's. No, I didn't. I wasn't able to find the original buddy's name. But I. But you know, rest in peace. But he did such an amazing job. It took four dogs to replace him for this movie. You had yeah. Rush, Chase, Zach, and Chance. Four dogs yeah. had to step into the shoes of one. Of <laughs> one. That's, yeah. That's, me four dogs. that's you. That, that's yeah. <laughs> Four dogs, um, and and you know this this movie it, it really is like you know the same kid is in it only now he's a teenager and he's playing football and really this is like the the big turning point of the of the of the movie because like you're like oh yeah basketball dog that makes sense but then all of a sudden the second movie comes around and it's like no 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 he can play football too and you just go. <laughs> You're yeah. just like mind blown. You're like, it's just so, so this is some kind of a really special dog because like, and you're like, I don't know. Can he play every sport? And they're like, just, just hold on. We're, 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 we're you know, wait for the future movies. Cause right now he's just a golden receiver. And, um, I, as we talked about it before the, there's Russians, they kidnap buddy. Yeah. And also um, and, reminiscent of Rocky four. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and, 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 um, this one to me didn't quite have enough uh, enough montages in it, but you know, it, it, you can't. I mean, it, it would be a perfect movie otherwise. It'd probably be number one if there was a montage somewhere in this movie. But um, you, you, you gotta love you gotta love the classic line: "If he shoots, 
he shits. I don't remember. Was that a deleted scene? Uh, it's in the director's cut. Oh, I didn't. You know what? That I gotta write that down because I gotta go back and watch the director's cut of Golden Receiver because I have heard it's much like you know you watch Terminator Two and then you watch the director's cut of Terminator Two and the yeah. the, di- the differences in it aren't major but it's just enough to make it an even better movie. Yeah. And so I'm like I've heard that Golden Receiver, um, the director's cut actually. Um, does that as well. So I don't know why. I feel stupid for not watching that before we did this. Anyway. What what more um, on the subject? D- did you ever happen to see the version of the Goonies with the octopus scene left in? No. I've seen the octopus scene on YouTube, though. Yeah, because it's in some versions of the movie, and in other versions it's not. And it's like this Mandela effect that turned out to be true. Well, I think probably because, you know, like, oh, I don't know, over here in America – when they have movies on network television, yeah, they end up sometimes having to add scenes because they're trying to time it out with the commercials and make it a full two hours or whatever they have to do. Right. So that may have been the case where, where people saw it on television and they yeah. left the octopus scene in. But in the theater, I saw it in the theater and then on VHS, and there was never an octopus scene. Right. And honestly, that kind of ruins the end of the movie for me because I always thought it was so funny when Data says the octopus was very scary because I'm like, that's hilarious because there was no octopus. But then once I've learned there was, I go, well, f- fuck that line. It's not funny uh-huh. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but the, but I, I don't think there's anything like that in the director's cut of Golden Receiver. No. But you know what? It's It's a good movie on its own. It's an absolute classic. And I can't really argue with it, but it has three more classicer. You know, there's 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 classic Ted Nugent, and then there's quote unquote classic, not even quote unquote. It's like doing this to bring bring the classic dog. Classic to, dog. Yeah, and so that's where we are right now. Top three. So let's do it. Let's do our top three Ted Nugent albums. Cool. Uh, rather shockingly, my number three ended up being Santa Paws Two: The Santa Pups. Man, I mean, you know what? I'm all about giving the underdog some rec- rep- rep- recognition, literally. Um, so I'm glad that you put this one higher up. I don't agree, but, you know. And, you know, this is the final installment of the Santa slash Air Buddies crossover trilogy. And this movie is the real reason for the season. And, you know, according to legend and by legend, I mean, fact, the ghost of Jimmy Stewart appeared at the world premiere of Santa Paul's 2 to declare it the greatest holiday movie ever made. Holy and, shit. How did I miss that? I did not even I did not know that. And since the ghost of Jimmy Stewart can see the future, the greatest holy ho- the greatest holiday movie that ever will be made. So holiday movies are down downhill from here, folks. Isn't it All great right. that isn't it great that in It's a Wonderful Life he's dead and and people can see him and then yeah. Jimmy Stewart died and people can still see him. It's like life imitating art, death imitating art. Whoa. Whoa. Anyway. <laughs> We're dead, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Grim Reaper. Dinner's over, worm dude. <laughs> Um, do, yeah. do you have any more to say about that one? Nah, I've got a hangnail and it oh. sucks. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to hurry it up. You got to go do something about that. No, um, it's okay. <laughs> get, so, so one, like I said, hitting on classic albums, there's, there's, there's not a lot to add to this. Uh, number three, Space Buddies from 2009. Cool. The, the third Buddies movie and once again, it's the same sort of thing because because once you've done dog sled team, my brain goes space, put them yeah. in space. Um, so and then all of a sudden you've got Astro Doggies, which is which is hilarious, and uh, and it, and it leads to like one of my favorite lines, and probably my second favorite line in all of the buddies movies, and um, that's where B Dog says the line, "We're lost in space, dog," and I've always really loved. <laughs> I always really loved how he how he did that because it's just like sometimes yeah. sometimes on paper a line just looks like a bunch of words 
but yeah. then it takes the actor to breathe the life and make it a classic line. Um, but yeah, I love, you know, space movies are fun. Dog movies are fun. Space dog movies. Fuck just me. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Just just get out of the way. Well, I, you know, because I'm going to be in the front of the line if they ever do another um, space dog movie. But um, yeah, it's it. Yeah. The, once again, we're, it, it literally gets to the point where these are albums that so many people talk about. You could just just do a search in in YouTube when we're done. Ted Nugent album rankings, and you're literally going to hear the same shit from other people out there, probably hundreds of people. So honestly, I'm just, I'm preaching to the choir. I'm just regurgitating shit, but you know, yeah, classic. We're in in classic, undeniable classic territory. Top two. I'm excited. I don't even remember what you haven't ranked so far, Um, but um, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Top two. Um. This is the best episode we've ever done. I'm going to throw it out there. Yeah, this is hands down, you know, really pushing the Pause down. Pause down. Pause down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, number two. Let me, let me say this. There are moments in history that change the world. The fall of the Berlin Wall. The invention of Doritos Nacho Cheese. That time I found a nine-month-old fish finger under the sofa after wondering what the hell that smell was. I don't know if that's moving out seven different X's. Uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, and then there was the moment when some titan of cinema said, "Hey, let's make a movie about a dog who plays baseball." My number two is Air Bud. Oh, he plays bas- basketball, not baseball. Yeah. Sorry, basketball. I, I said the wrong sport. I was I was confused because I'm like, you already talked about seventh inning fetch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the classic know. Air Bud. Yeah. I, I shit the bed there. Uh, anyway. You shit the bud. I shit the bud. <laughs> shit dog. <laughs> 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 when, uh, when... <laughs> it's just the, the idea that you're just trying to give it to me. Like, here, you have this. <laughs> I got you something. It's, just, <laughs> it's not even a living dog. It's like a dog sculpture made of dog shit. Shit dog. I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> Who does? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when 12-year-old Josh learns his dog can make shot after shot, I think we all learned a little something about ourselves as well. And that something was, I could go at least another 13 movies following the exact same premise (laughs) and it it's a classic yeah without a shadow of a doubt the debut you can't go wrong you know this is a classic ted nugent album so yeah sometimes the bar is set so high with a first album that it's yeah pretty unfuckwithable this movie had a total stranglehold on me when i first heard it Um, yeah yeah yeah. And, and it and and it it really raises the question the, the age old question that so many of us, not just Ted Nugent fans, not just music fans, but fans in general of just life. Yeah. Is it Wango or is it Tango? Hmm. It's, hard, it's hard. I mean, it's like, it's the question, like, we're all going to die and we're never going to know on our deathbeds. It's just, we're still going to be thinking about that. Like, is it Wango or is it Tango? Hmm. Luckily, um, we don't really have to worry about that because you know um, Ted pretty much laid it out for us. But you know, still, um, if, uh, if he's questioning it, then we know it's all good because we're all questioning it. I have already rehearsed my deathbed monologue. Oh shit! Out, and it goes as following: Death dog. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, the hand goes over my eyes and they close and there, there, that, that's the end. Man, I, I mean, I'll be gone. I'll be gone before you, but, you know, somebody film it for me and send it to me in hell. Cause that's where I think I, I've been told that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> so, uh, um, anyway, 
I'm sorry. Let's move on. We have, I, I, we get, we're, we're almost done here. Uh, top two, classic Ted Nugent here, like unfuckwithable Ted Nugent at this point. Number two, Super Buddies from 2013. Hey. So the fact that this is the final Buddies movie, before they, did, before they did, there's like a weird new Buddies thing on like Netflix or something. It's not Buddies. It's something else, something puppies. I don't fucking know. But I, 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 I was like, well, we can save that for another episode. Hmm. But um, Super Buddies is the fucking... <laughs> but, Super <laughs> Buddies is good. Super Buddies is... Hey. We're, doing, we're doing doing fireworks on the screen, guys, in the podcast world. It, this is how you wrap up a a, a franchise. Yeah. It's it's taking the idea of movie number one. It's a dog that can play basketball, and you're just like, that dog's amazing. How much more amazing can dogs get? Uh, super buddies, and and so of course it's like once again it's like how do we get this far into this? Fourteen movies, and finally they're like. Oh, they should be superheroes. Absolutely, they should be. And so, they they all they find magical rings to make them into super pups, and and it really ends it ends everything on such a high note because it's such a fun movie. It's so well done. the 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 special effects are amazing. It, it, it there was never a point where I was questioning whether or not these dogs were actually super. Like it mm. it. It's so well done. The technology of today, even in 2013, um, was good enough to just make a timeless classic. And it really wraps up the story of B-Dog, Butterball, Buddha, Rosebud, Mudbud. My favorite being Mudbud. And you finally just get this great final chapter. And it doesn't end things necessarily. It's leaving it open. Because I'm hoping that our conversation will lead to the the filmmakers being like you know what maybe we're not done maybe we're not done with with the buddies or even with an airbud because it's like airbud maybe they will revive the the shooting movie and the chess movie and eventually they are going to get to the badminton movie and the cricket movie and there's all these different things and just like finally you know maybe maybe you know i i, I know we're a small podcast but I have grand, grand visions of what we could do, Absolutely. and especially when they, especially when they leave off on a fucking classic like like Super Buddies, it's just the best way to to leave it off. And on top of that, I, I don't think Ted Nugent's done. I I think that that he's still going so strong. There could be plenty more classics before he's gone. So. Sure. I'm just glad we're. I'm just glad we're here to talk about him and his in his in his music before he's gone. Because when he's gone, that's going to be a sad day for everybody. Yeah. All I, right. We, Number one. We come. We come. Uh, we, come, <laughs> we, come <laughs> we do. <laughs> we come at last to the crown jewel of the Ted Nugent discography. Yes. Uh, and I just knew this had to be my number one. Uh, but sometimes the obvious choice is still the correct one, and so it is with Space Buddies. Is my number one. I'm. Um, you know what? I'm. I'm with you on this one, man. Like it was. A, it's. Yeah. I, it's a great, great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Th there are a few things on this earth more adorable than golden retriever puppies, and a few things in this cosmos that tug at a man like the allure of space. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're into that kind of thing, if you're wanting to be tugging at men, yeah. I'm, have you ever seen that clip of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Did I bring this up last time? Where he's like, "Hey, he's, I go to the gym, and it's it's as satisfying to me as coming." Oh, that's from I'm, that's from Pumping yeah, Iron. Pump, pumping, yeah. pumping Iron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, go. It's like having sex with a woman and coming. I, I I'm coming at the gym. I go home. I come there. I'm on my way home. Coming. 24 7 calm and it's just, it's just fucking why do why do i why do i go always i always had the 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 uh, the uh, vision that like arnold schwarzenegger just blows a woman into the wall you know, he's, <laughs> you know what i'm yeah. saying like especially especially back in the day back in his prime like oh, it was, yeah. 
they probably had to like take everything off the walls whenever whenever they would have sex because it's just like the dude probably shoots like a cannon like one of those big old rocket launchers you know from the movies and stuff probably like that he has to go take cover get to the chopper be like that fucking one he's got in predator yeah yeah <laughs> fires multiple rockets that's that thing's crazy yeah oh but dude space buddies sorry yeah yeah um so i mean you combine the elements of golden retrievers in space and you get uh an experience that enriches your very soul and can teach the most cynical heart to love again uh, one giant leap for dog kind indeed thanks ted um yeah yeah um, well i like i said my my number one it's real <laughs> wait do i do salute or do hand over heart it's not military it's hard i don't know which one of the things <laughs> 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 that was my Fergie. <laughs> um, anyway, so my so all right, now time for my number one, and and, and occasionally, sorry, it cuts every now and again halfway through singing, it just cuts to the guy in Rocky oh. Five. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Go watch that, everybody. Um, so all right, so for my number one, it's <laughs> sorry, I I know I. I know I keep I, I keep getting sidetracked and I'm really sorry to cut you it's, off, but this is it's, the last. It's thing okay. I, Do you apologize to thing. Ted? Apologize to Ted before we yeah, do this. So, sorry, Ted. Um, yeah. You ever seen those videos on YouTube that are like ten hours of silence, intermittently broken by the sound of like a dodgeball hitting the ground? Like <laughs> no, but I mean it makes sense <laughs> now that you say it. Honestly, like it, it, the joke itself is enough to carry its runtime. Yeah, it's just some of them, man. They crack me up. Did I ever tell you about my favorite like hours long video on the? I think I've mentioned this probably years ago on one of our episodes. But my favorite <laughs> one, it, it, I don't know if it's still up there, but it's the song, the song from the Last Dragon, the movie, the Last, uh, the the you know the eighties movie, the Last Dragon. Yeah, and it's the it's the theme song from the Last Dragon. And it's the chorus of the song plays for, I don't know, at least an hour, if not more than that. But the thing that I love about it is that because the, the song, the chorus is this. It's like, you know, you are the last dragon. You possess the power of the glow. And then there's this drum roll. And yeah. you, so by the time you keep hearing the drum roll and it's been like 20 times, the drum roll <laughs> starts making me laugh so much. <laughs> because it just it just brings us right back in again. So every single time you get to hear the you are the last dragon. <laughs> it's uh, it's I hope it's still up on the internet because it's just so great. Is it the last dragon, but it's over ten hours long? Oh, I think I think that might be it. Put it yeah. put it on just so you can hear the drum roll. Okay. Okay, I'm what Oh, I got the top gun bell. What are you even doing? Are you listening to the song? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going along to it. I'm giving you a frame of reference. Okay. That doesn't sound anything like it. What are you watching? <laughs> the, the last dragon, but it's over 10 hours long. Right. Oh, do get do. Wait, pl wait, pl hold on. What? Pl turn, turn that up. What are you listening to? <laughs> okay, that's not that's not the version I'm 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 I'm, I'm talking about because it's literally oh, okay. just it's just the chorus. Oh, okay, the last dragon chorus ten hour. I'm sure I'll find it eventually. That is anyway, funny though. <laughs> anyway, it's. It's great. Maybe that one plays the whole song, and then when it gets to the chorus, it it uh, it repeats it. But I don't know. Anyway, I'm sorry, guys. This is <laughs> this has been this has been super disrespectful to Mr. Nugent, and I apologize, sir. Um, but we're getting on to my number one, which is for me was an easy one because, like, when Ted Nugent started his solo career, 
he mm-hmm. had a clear vision of like what he wanted to do. And when that happens, and you're already a seasoned musician, mm. you're able to pump out a fucking flawless classic debut album. And that's exactly what he did. So I had to go with the origin of the whole fucking thing, Air Bud from 1997. Nice. Um, directed by Charles Martin Smith. Now, you may actually know Charles Martin Smith as an actor and not a director. Um, two pretty high-profile movies that he was in back in the late 70s. He was in American Graffiti. He was one of the teenagers in American Graffiti. And he was one of the crickets in the Buddy Holly story. Wow. So, I don't know if you've seen the Buddy Holly story with with uh, no, with, uh, with, with, um, with um, Buttered Sausage. What's his name? Um, what's, what's Buttered Sausage's name? Um, oh, I, I don't know. God damn it. Why can't I think of his name right now? From Point Break. Um, um, God damn it. Why am I so, why am I, why am I, it's because of all the. Gary Busey. Te- Gary Busey. He plays, he plays Buddy Holly in that movie. And then Charles Martin Smith plays uh, the director. Isn't it funny how, uh, plays the director, plays one of the crickets. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the, it's so fun. Do you know what I'm talking about when I said buttered sausage? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's that it's, clip. Let's talk about it, buttered sausage. Why yeah. is it doing what it's doing? Get it out of my face. That's not that's not my jam. I don't buy jam. I buy I buy jelly and I kiss it on the lips. <laughs> oh, Which man. was it was sad to me to find out that that's not actually Gary Busey. That's somebody doing an impression, and they did AI to make the face look like him. <laughs> but also makes me happy that Ted that Ted Nugent that whatever Gary Busey Ted Nugent same dude probably um, that Gary Busey um, isn't that far gone. He's pretty far <laughs> yeah. gone, but not that far gone. Anyway, yeah. Air Bud, sorry. Um, so this, th- this, you really get to see the origin story of everybody. And honestly, it's a story that like never gets old to me because, uh, you know, buddy, his, his owner, Norm, Norm Snively was an alcoholic party clown. Hmm. And that's just one of those stories. Where I'm just like, yeah, party clowns shouldn't be owning dogs, let alone alcoholic party clowns. I don't think that. It's just one of those things where you just go, oh, this is a recipe for a disaster. I hope, yeah. I hope Buddy gets out of this, and he does. He escapes from the alcoholic party clown, and um, eventually finds our 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 child hero of the movie, I guess. And uh, they find out that he can play basketball. Now, the interesting thing about the original Air Bud is, if you look at it, there are elements of it that really kind of remind me of the Karate Kid, but with basketball and a dog. Yeah. And um, that's not lost on me because I love the Karate Kid. But what we, you know, the, I mean, I know that you, you're talking about this franchise, and you can only fit in so many classic moments. But the we you had to have known that this was going to be a franchise for movie number one because yeah, they set everything up so perfectly in the end of the movie with like one of the best scenes in any movie ever, which is where they're checking the rule book because the one the one coach is like dogs can't play basketball and they fucking check the rule book and they're like there is no rule in the rule book that says dogs can't play basketball and i'm just like that's genius that because i guarantee you there's also no dog reference in any other rule book so boom franchise born and um Aside from it just being an, an amazing movie, kudos to Charles Martin Smith for his direction because it's it's off the charts good. But just the fact that you're able to create a movie that can bring almost 20 years of movies after it. Yeah. So that's why the, uh, the debut album from Ted Nugent is my number one um, because it, nothing else exists without that album. And um, so, yeah, I, 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 you know, when it's all said and done, I have to say that um, I have a new outlook on the career of Ted Nugent. Yeah. And so this was a really great episode to do. Um, I, I uh, and, and I'm kind of glad we decided to do it. Um, mm. But uh, it but was now informative and stimulating. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so, uh, and so now, and now we're done with the Ted Nugent discography. And whenever we finish the discography, we celebrate <sighs> like this: three, two, three, two one. one. April, April Fools! Fools. <laughs> April Fools, everybody! Man, that was yeah. really hard to like keep it together until the end. Yeah. Woo! Hot damn! Holy shit, balls! That is woo! Man, I'm I'm spent. That is the um. If you if you if all of you out there, those of you who are still watching, you already had you already knew this was because it came out on April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> But I oh. but I'm hoping everybody really enjoyed our uh, our little April Fool's joke and our shit talking, our and, shit talking, uh, and and I, I want to say I want to say a big thanks to uh, David Youngblood, uh, the writer of the article that I basically ripped off for Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> just to okay. let everybody know i actually did the work and i went and uh i didn't watch all of the air buddies movies but i actually did a little bit of research i'd seen several of them growing up and i had I've enough s- of a yeah. yeah with my with my daughter i saw space buddies super buddies and one other one it may have been treasure no spooky buddies is the other one that i saw yeah. Um, and to be fair, if we were doing a legitimate one, I do think Super Buddies is the one I enjoyed the most. But uh, yeah. But anyway, um, I don't know if I've ever actually even seen Air Bud, the original Air Bud. But I, I did, I did find it on YouTube, and I kind of skimmed through it a little bit. But yeah, just enough to make uh, this present, this gift to you guys, April Fool's gift to the peanut butter platypuses, aluminium squirrels. Uh, uh, what is Belvedere it? Belvedere ball, ball sitters and Christmas dogs out there. Christmas dogs. Um, so thank you all. You're you're all the best. Um, because yeah. the ones that are still here, you're you're the ones that you're you're who we are doing this for. I'm tired and I haven't eaten anything today. Holy um, shit! Well, I mean, I had I had I had chicken broth and I had a Jello, and that's all I'm gonna have for the rest of the day. I'm gonna have chicken broth again later. And Jello again later, and oh, then they're gonna damn. probe me tomorrow morning. <laughs> um, so, um, but uh, but by the time this episode comes out, um, I will already have, have been out on the other end of that whole thing. So, um, you know, uh, that's that's something. That's an experience, I guess, most forty-year-olds go through. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I thought I was sort of thinking about that. I'm sorry. I know we need to wrap this up, but. <laughs> Being like, you know, in my mid forties and I'm like, yeah, they, they say when you go to the doctor that you got around this time, you got to do your colonoscopy. And that immediately puts me in the mindset of, I wonder, I would like to see all these like rock and rollers and movie stars. Do they all, they all go like t- Tom Cruise. Could I have, could t- did Tom Cruise have a colonoscopy? And then on the side of like rock and roll, did Sebastian Bach have a col? Did Ted Nugent have a colonoscopy? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure he didn't because he's like, no man's going near my butt. That's some woke bullshit. Um, <laughs> but uh, so it really makes me think like, does d- d- does everybody, does Lars Ulrich, did he have a colonoscopy? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so anyway, these are the things that I think of when I'm, when I'm home alone at night. I know for a fact that the front man of 80s hard rock band Icon appeared on an episode of Dr. Pimple Popper interesting that's yeah. that's a that's a grab this, like, that i he had this like big lump on his neck that you know he had to get seen to but yeah I, so my wife loves pimple popping videos and i fucking hate them they're so gross oh they gross me out too dude like yeah like uh it's one of those things like, like my my mom loves them and I, every time i see them i'm like Oh, how does that not turn your stomach? That is rancid. Yeah, yeah, it's gross. What, do you what know what happened to this person? <laughs> <laughs> do you do you do you know what? My, my, I just had a thought that's probably the best thing about this. How this episode has turned out is that, <laughs> that? is that we're going to have an episode that's around two hours long. So it's going to be even more of, a, of an idea that people will be like, oh, maybe they really do talk about Ted Nugent because it's, <laughs> it's a two hour episode. And here we are talking about pimple popping at the end of it. And uh, and we did all the buddies movies. Um, uh, 
Which if you were, I don't even remember what episode we did where we talked about eventually doing the Buddies movies. But oh, man. Here, here you are. Um, our gift to you. I guess, yeah. we should, I guess we should wrap it up. Um, but no next time, next time you see us, we'll be back with another actual ranking, I believe. Um, I yeah. promise, I promise, right? I promise. Mm. Um, yeah. they, don't trust, they don't fucking trust you after what yeah. you said. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, all right. That being said, you've all, if you're still watching, you've been a trooper and we love you and thank you very much or listening the podcast listeners. I'm not forgetting about you. You're very important to me. Mm. Um, and, uh, so that's the end of it. And so we'll see you guys again next time on another Crankton Ranked. But for right now, as usual, we're going to wrap things up as we normally do by throwing it over to Eddie Sparks to take us out. Later, dog.